I've been talking a lot about Douglas, and one of the posts was about Douglas, and it sort of got me in the mood to to talk about a little bit about discipline trainer tonight. Only literally five or ten pages in is is where most of the uh, sub of presentation the presentation comes from tonight, and certainly a hundred percent of the ins of the inspiration comes from that. So. Just a couple of, of things which I thought were kind of interesting. And uh, George said, it seems like the odds are against us with a 90% failure rate. Can it become more than 10%? And I said, probably not. Unless, of course, you don't micromanage, focus on one thing versus everything, trade at a small size while learning, and all the other stuff that I preach, but don't always do, of course, LOL. So I thought that was kind of good to include my own little post in there. Um, George posted this to begin with. But anyway, I recommend you read it. I've got it, got it literally, literally right here, and I'm looking forward to going through my notes one more time. A lot of the things that Douglas talks about is, is how the market is all in your head. And I've done presentations before where I've showed, I, I, I wanted to find a very obscure market that went into a horrible bear market. And I figured cocoa would be a good one. Even when I was a commodity trader, I didn't trade cocoa that much. Cocoa is kind of a crazy market to trade. So I figured there weren't a lot of people that trade it. And whenever I speak in person or whatever, and I said, okay, how many of you were stressed out by the, I think it was 2017, maybe a little bit earlier, bear market and cocoa. And so far, not one person has raised their hand. What well, was a horrible bear market? Why was it that stressful? It wasn't stressful because nobody was trading it, at least in my audience. So a lot of times the market, or all the time, it's kind of in your head. Now, what do I mean by that? And this is, again, just the first few pages into Douglas's book. In fact, this is in the preface. The markets have absolutely no power or control over you. No expectation of your behavior and no regard for your welfare. Well, that no regard for the welfare is pretty tough. And believe me, it's tough when I'm watching the screen thinking what the market should do, especially since I'm already in a position, okay? And already have that built-in bias, right? And it's not doing what I think it's gonna do. And one of the things I've been saying a lot lately is the market will do the most obvious in an unobvious manner. If it's gonna trend lower, it's gonna have a big shakeout to the upside first, okay? And that's the kind of things that's been kind of hard to trade lately is these the short side and then have to deal with these big knockout moves and stuff. But the markets don't have any power over you. You can only control yourself. In fact, you can't control or manipulate the markets, right? And the markets have absolutely no power or control over you. The responsibility for what you perceive and for your resulting behavior resides only in you. The only thing you can control is yourself. And heavy is the head that wears a crown. And it's tough. And I, my shower thought earlier as I was getting ready for this presentation is that we all struggle in this business and these scumbags out there that pretend it's all easy, they're probably not real traders. And I know some of them are going to jail that I really don't, I, don't, I never did like these fellows. <laughs> And it just goes to show you that they're not real traders and they're not getting their ass handed to them quite often. You know, it, it, it really is a Janet Jackson type of, of world. I had one of my best weeks ever on the intraday stuff last week. And this week, I'm, uh, I'm actually not getting creamed, but I'm negative so far this week for the week. Just trying to keep a head around above the water and it's tough. And even last week, I was surprised at the end results because it was it didn't feel like it was an easy week. So don't feel lonely if you're struggling and fairly new to trading. It will get easier. It'll never get easy. But the one thing, and I hate to say this because I don't want to scare you away, but the one thing that's a little scary is the longer you've been at this, sometimes the harder it is when the market in your mind, like we're talking about, right, is is not doing what you think it should do. The market, what is, is, right? 
anyway, I found this slide which had some classic Douglas on it when I was putting together my presentation. And we've been talking a lot about the pre-mortem. And that's a very important thing to do and something I've been focusing a lot on. That's doing the time traveling. How am I going to feel when I'm doing my post-mortem on this trade? Is this really the best trade that I can find? In the post-mortem, you'll go back and say, ah, what the hell was I thinking? You'll, you'll find yourself doing that quite a bit. That's okay. It means you're growing and learning. But the more you do going into it, and the better the trade is going into it, the better outcome you're going to have, like Papa John, better ingredients, better pizza. So a better pre-mortem, garbage in, garbage out, the better off you are going to be in the trade. If you can put on a trade without hesitation, take it off without emotional discomfort, you have accepted the risk. And and lately, I've been a little extra emotional lately, and I've been having some discomfort. And my wife pointed out that I've been a little grouchy lately. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to explain to her that with volatility is whack like this, there is an opportunity if you can keep your head while everybody else is losing theirs. But yes, you have to accept that risk. And if you're new to trading and you're really stressed out, bump your share size down. And I bumped my share size down on intraday stuff at least to help me be a little less grouchy and a little less emotional. Now, one thing I've talked about a lot, George says done. All right, fantastic. So you're going to bump your share size down. Good, good, you know. And here's the thing. Here's the other thing I was thinking about in the shower. I was thinking about you, George. <laughs> Dave, the things you think about in the shower change. I think you're going to be okay longer term, although it might not feel like it right now. George had a not so good first year of trading, but I think it's reasonable tuition. And if I had to bet on somebody, I would bet on George. Because he had a bad first year and he hasn't quite given up just yet. And in fact, I don't think he is going to give up. And as opposed to somebody who has immediate success, I, I've never had anyone that I can remember at least. And if you're you're out there, let me know. But I've never had anyone that had immediate success following my stuff, such as my trading service, where there's official recommendations, so to speak. I've never had anybody come in and follow it and make a lot of money because conditions are great. I've never had that person make it as a trader. They seem to fall off the face of the earth. And that instant success can really hurt you. And I've talked about this many times before, but that's where you end up chasing that high, but it was working so well. Most dangerous phrase in trading. Six, 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 six words. Now, I talk a lot about being flippant. It means that you do what you have to do when you have to do it, and you don't care. And provided that you've got a really good pre-mortem going in and you accept that trade, then you could be flippant, okay? And as I confess quite often, I'm an emotional guy. I also, as recommended, I can never remember the name of the book, but it was a good book. Uh, Larry Williams' son wrote a book on trading psychology. And as I said a thousand times, it said, take a personality test. My agreeableness was like off the charts, meaning that I think that I'm right. <laughs> and as I said before, I told my wife and kids, and they looked at me like I pooed my pants. Anyway, essentially what you fear is not the markets, but rather your inability to do what you need to do without hesitation. And one thing I've been working on lately, especially on intraday stuff, and the reason I keep bringing up the intraday stuff is I spend, I actually spend a lot of time telling you not to day trade, but since I'm here, I kind of feel like there's some opportunities that I can take in ETFs and especially in something like the opening gap reversals and occasionally a Russian doll, which is you have a daily setup and then you take an intraday setup, maybe an intraday breakout off a pullback or something like that. We've talked about that quite a bit. If you want to know more about that, I have the quick clips on YouTube if you're not a member of. of DaveLander.com. But this is key right here. If you can reach a point where you do this one little sentence and you're flipping about it, you have you have arrived. 